now to talk about the status quo. So President Bush established the prison as a symbol of power and of uh, a superior, uh, superiority over the terrorist organizations. It was also created so that the United States officials could uh, uh, work outside the United States uh, law system. There was, this was interpreted as the war on terrorism by the general public and caused fragmentation in American society that led to huge xenophobia against the Muslim people. The Muslim societies were also uh, fragmented because of the tortures that were executed in Guantanamo Bay prison uh, and because of the negative stereotype that was created about the Muslim people. For these reasons, in 2008, President Obama declared that America has never been in, uh, in, uh, in war on terror and that Islamic religion is an integral part of American future and promised to close down the prison. The process was prolonged because of political issues. He also promised to close down the prison to ensure the fundamental rights that the United States stand for. And in this debate, we'll, pr uh, we'll present you two uh, uh, ar arguments. The first one, that uh, the outdated symbol of Guantanamo Bay prison tarnishes the reputation of the United States. And the second argument, that uh, about the responsibility to pay the injustices caused to the prisoners. So now going into the first argument about the outdated symbol of, of Guantanamo Bay prison. The first point that we have is because of human rights abuses in the prison, the United States find itself uh, inconsistent with the values that it stands for and the values that uh, its allies stand for. This makes the Western countries more reluctant to the, uh, to the ways that America deals with terrorism and lowers, lowers the American standing in the world. And for example, more than 65 of European Union citizens oppose Guantanamo Bay prison. The UK and another example that we have is that the UK detention scheme was struck down by House of Lords in 2004 as inconsistent with the UK's fundamental rights obligations. The second support that we have is that by seeing the hypocrisy in United States behavior, it's easier for undemocratic regimes like Malaysia or Syria that hold hundreds of illegal detainee centers to discount the criticisms about um, imprisonment without due process that they receive from the international public by pointing out to Guantanamo Bay prison. 
An example that we have is that in 2007, when the United States officials criticized Malaysia decision to arrest and detain 500 activists under the country's administrative detention law, Malaysia's deputy minister pointed immediately to Guantanamo. He said that he would not feel the need to explain the country's detentions as long as Guantanamo Bay Prison is open. And the last point that we have is that Guantanamo Bay Prison serves um, as an example for the terrorist groups to point out the injustices of America. Uh, and that way, uh, these terrorist groups are able to easily recruit new members and so rally the Arab people against Western countries. An example that we have is um, when President Obama declared that, one, and I quote, Guantanamo Bay became a symbol that helped Al Qaeda recruit terrorists to its cause. And he also added, the existence existence of Guantanamo likely created more tourists around the world than it ever detained. So for, um, so for these three subpoints, we believe that um, the audience of Guantanamo Bay Prison trashes the reputation of the United States, so Guantanamo Bay Prison should be closed down immediately. And now going to the second uh, argument about the responsibility to pay, to pay the injustices caused to the prisoners. Okay, so first of all, uh, we see that there are two types of prisoners of the remaining 171 in Guantanamo. First, they are guilty of terrorist activity, and second, uh, that consists of 89 pr prisoners that have already been declared innocent uh, and uh, have to be released by the government. All of these prisoners are kept there without due process. We believe that people who are guilty should be transferred to federal courts and, judge, uh, and uh, should be um, 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 should be transferred to the uh, federal courts. Should receive the the, um, uh, the 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 federal court procedure, and then they should start serving their time. Uh, the prisoners that have been uh, cleared to release uh, suffer huge moral injustice because their fundamental right to movement and personal liberties is being infringed upon. Every additional day spent in Guantanamo only exaggerates the injustices and causes permanent tra trauma to the pri prisoners who are still kept uh, in degrading conditions. And the second, second sub point that we have is we see that it's highly moral to keep those prisoners of held in Guantanamo, not only because they should not be should not be there, but also because of the injustices that they suffered. This, this includes harsh torture methods, humiliation, and dehumanization. An example that we have is that more than 200 FBI agents reported abusive treatment of Guantanamo prisoners. All of these atrocities against are against the ideals of uh, America. Uh, so for for um, the America stands for. So for every single additional day that those people stay in, the, uh, in, uh, in, the, in those conditions, it only exaggerates the hypocrisy and injustice of the United States. So ladies and gentlemen, what I prove you is first of all that uh, the, the Guantanamo the Bay as a symbol is outdated and should be closed immediately. And also we should pay back the bill for, to, um, for the criminals that we've done and the injustice. So for all these reasons, I beg you to propose. Thank you. Prosecutors would have to present 
tons of intelligence which may have taken years to gather. Are you willing to risk that? Yes, we are willing to risk that because it's, uh, we say that it's better to, to have some kind of, you know, some kind of process of, of justice so rather than, okay. rather than so having a prison without anything. So basically, you're anything. saying that Guantanamo stands as a point, a rallying point, but don't you think a public trial, which would give these terrorists the opportunity to grandstand and further portray their views would be more of a rallying point? No, we don't believe. We don't believe that. You know, first of all, we said you know, uh, 89 of those prisoners have already been uh, you know, charged. So this proves that they're, you know, they haven't been, uh, you know, in terms of organization. So we don't believe that they would uh, actually, you know, pose some kind of propaganda. And if, 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 if that would be the case, we, we also have, well, you know, closed trials where, um, you know, a closed trials against civilian courts. Well, it's, no, no, it's based on, uh, you know, we can have either an open or a closed trial. So that defeats the purpose because military prisons are basically like closed, like... No, no, it doesn't defeat the purpose because, you know, when you have a military trial, it's been, you know, you have... So you can see that you're, you're taking, you're stripping them of some rights by having a closed trial? So you can see that you can take away some rights and act... No, it depends So you can, you can take, that's not, that's not normal, that's not what government okay, do. We say that we would judge this on case by case. If we say that uh, you know, if, if there's a you know, if we can have a, little, uh, a trial without um, you know any kind of, of propaganda being left out, we say that we're completely able to do that. of today that says the rights of these detainees are absolute, yet they are willing to curtail their rights when they try them in closed courts. Thus we see a principally inconsistent team 
deep affirmative of today. That is A, propagating these rights of these individuals and secondly, negating their rights, that is the right to a civil trial. Thus, we believe that on a principle level, concede that these rights, once pose a significant threat to society, can be taken away. Moreover, they talk about how innocent people will be left alone and how we torturing innocent people. Now, we believe that the affirmative of today conveniently ignores people that are not innocent and kept under Gurtanu. We've seen due process exist in Gurtanu, which will be one of my lines of arguments. We've seen that even when people are convicted of being innocent, they have been released from Gurtanu. You've released 48 detainees from Gurtanu. Thus, the idea of you torturing innocent people you're actually apprehending that and you're having these innocent people and you have a due process that exists within the model of the negative of today. Now what this is that once Guantanamo exists, it symbolizes US government and how US is actually working against and is suppressing civil liberties of these individuals and is showing a symbol of power and authority. No ladies here. We believe the United States of America is working towards the war on terror and one of the main reasons and one of the main ideas that it wants to fulfill is that you are sending a message to terrorists. Let's assume a world in which Guantanamo Bay is closed down. Terrorists see that the United States of America has taken a back step in the war on terror. Is this a good message to send to terrorists and won't there be a room for exploitation and won't there be further encouragement for terrorists within the model of team affirmative of today, yes ladies and gentlemen, and there will be more terror that will be caused within the model of team affirmative. Having established that, let's look at the, uh, let's look at the stance of team uh, of negative of today. We base our stance on four lines of argument. Number one, closing Guantanamo Bay will harm national security. Secondly, trying Guantanamo Bay detainees presents a serious risk to the war on terror. Third, sufficient due process and justice exists in Guantanamo. Fourthly, closing Guantanamo Bay is not practical. Now let's look at the purpose that Guantanamo Bay serves. Firstly, it touches the individuals that are kept in Guantanamo. Now let's understand the importance of information gained from Guantanamo. We saw that torturing Khalid Sheikh Mohammed stopped the Liberty Tower bombing. Thus, if it is team affirmative of today saying the torture does not protect the individuals, we believe they are wrong. We are for torture and once we have these certain separate prisons, we are asking them this question, will you torture them to gain important information once they know that the lives of individuals are kept under a serious threat? Is another question that we have from Team Pro team Affirmative of today. Moreover, the Secretary of Defense of the United States of America has explicitly said that the information gained from Guantanamo Bay has saved lives. Thus, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that Guantanamo Bay is fulfilling its role to society and thus is protecting lives. We have the example of Abdullah bin Masood who was captured in Afghanistan and released because there was, less, there was less evidence when he was tried in the civilian court. Ladies and gentlemen, we saw that he, he carried out these certain attacks and killed two individuals and was seen as the mastermind behind and was seen in second in command behind Al-Qaeda. Thus, we see that this creates a legal loophole for these terrorists to, uh, to, uh, to exploit based on less evidence existing. Moreover, talking about what this would do if you try them in civilian courts, we have the second line of argument which will be based on how trying with Arama Bay poses serious risk to the world. We see that you try these certain individuals and we have the example of how and when uh, an individual who was tried within Gudarmo, he had to re release information of 200 suspected individuals, ladies and gentlemen, and this allowed Osama bin Laden to carry out his planning and was, uh, allowed him to escape from the US grave hold for which they could easily have captured Osama bin Laden. Thus, we see that important intelligence is released within the civilian courts and this leads to further terrorism that Team Affirmative of today wants to stop. Moreover, we believe that these people get a right and these people can have emotional appeal for which in when, once they get this trial in the civilian court and this is actually detrimental and people could be lured on to terrorism. Thus the idea of you stopping terror existing within the model of Team Affirmative of today does not stand. Now talking about how sufficient justice and due process exists within Guantanamo. Article 75 of the Additional Protocol to the Geneva Convention defines the judicial guarantees required as indispensable. We have seen that these, these people are afforded a type of a habeas corpus under the US law. 
and thus we see that a sufficient due process still exists within the model that team negative of the paper process. And also talking about the practical issues and moving on to the fourth line of argument on how closing Gautama Bay is not practical. One of the options is to send these prisoners home. Now 40% of these detainees are Yemeni and the Yemeni government is not willing to accept these people into their homeland. What do you do ladies and gentlemen once you are faced with these practical issues? Moreover, a second option is to recenter these detainees in the United States of America. But the Department of Homeland Security has already raised a resistance to a plan that would just release just seven of the inmates inside the country. Thus, people are not willing to have these people in their own country. Moreover, we have seen that these big prisons have launched a campaign to keep these suspected terrorists and to keep the individuals of these Guantanamo out. Thus, if you want to put them in prison, we see that these big prisons are not ready to accept these detainees. Thus, the idea is that you are fulfilling the role of the war on terror and having the policy of being affirmative is not practical. For all these, more, for all these reasons, we are proud of them. about um, the practicality side. Can you please expand the, oh, uh, on the idea of why why USA does not want these uh, prisoners within their borders? The Department of Homeland Security has already raised its resistance to a plan that would have these US people uh, that would release just seven inmates of the country and keep the rest of them. Thus, they are not willing to release them to other countries. Moreover, these big prisons have launched a campaign to not let these detainees into their prisons. Thus, it is not practical. Thank you, sir. We're going to change, we're arguing that we're going to change the policy of these prisons in the first place. I mean, would there be any other problems without that, that the campaign? The was? idea is that these prisons still represent the policy that you're trying to implement. And we have another contention. In these prisons, you're not allowed to torture these individuals, thus you're not going to gain valuable information and you're not going to aid to the war of death. Sir, sir, if we're saying actually we're against torture in Guantanamo, we are actually one uh, justice to be made, why are you saying, why are you arguing for torture in the first place? No, we're saying that since Guantanamo's purpose was to incapacitate these individuals as well as torture these individuals, you're A, keeping them out of society and Pre preventing potential harm and secondly gaining important information that has the potentiality to save lives. That's you fulfill the blood of Guantanamo. But we're saying, we're saying that Guantanamo is actually a mistake of the past that you know, we want to change. Does it, mean, does it mean that we won't torture and we do not allow actual torture within our policy? But we believe torture is necessary and torture is important once you want to gain information. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to another issue about uh, when we talk about that we're going to take a uh, step back on terrorism. Can you just found this idea? We believe that since these A, you letting these terrorists escape without having important information, thus you actually create a loophole in which terrorists are able to exchange information without this information being extracted. For example, with the example of which you torture 700 IRA members, when in which you torture members of the Irish Republic and you gain information about 700 IRA terrorist members and you were able to protect the national interest of the country. So how is it a step back on terrorism itself? Because you're not going to gain information. And secondly, the message that you're sending to terrorists is that we're closing something that is going to incapacitate you. The terrorists see it easy. And thus terrorists will find it a loophole to exploit since the state is not taking a ready and the state is not taking these terrorists head on. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, when George Bush came up with the idea of war on terror, it was meant to be a war of values. It was meant to be that the terrorists who take the low ground of inducing fear, of using illegal methods to kill thousands of innocents just to prove their cause, uh, will be defeated by the United States that takes the higher moral ground, ladies and gentlemen. What we see here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that Guantanamo Bay completely disproves that, gives incentives to Al-Qaeda, to oppressive regimes, to uh, the European Union, to defragment the world, to defragment societies, and to and it acts essentially against the US, against their own uh, sovereignty and their own security. And in the end, it acts against the people who are there, uh, and that consists vast vastly of innocent people, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to add to our definition, as it was unclear and pointed out in uh, the cross-examinations when we said federal courts, we would implement uh, closed courts uh, as civil cases because we believe these are still special people that have been tortured, subjected to torture, and we don't believe that open courts would be good for them or would be good for the public. So ladies and gentlemen, as we have mental institutions for mentally unstable people, as we have juvenile colonies for juveniles, we believe that a separate court system, for example, like it was in Nuremberg for Nazis, should be implemented in this case and would be closed off and would not release information uh, as they claim. So ladies and gentlemen, now moving on uh, and we're building our case. Uh, on our first argument that it tarnishes the reputation of, uh, of the United States and not has dire consequences, they've completely ignored our points about the European Union, how it completely destroys the, uh, uh, the co cooperation that NATO has, as 65% of, European, uh, 65 of uh, Europeans do not agree with this. The UK would not implement a sim similar detention camp, uh, and we see that it defragments the uh, 
the Union. Uh, they've also uh, ignored our uh, examples about oppressive regimes, how they can then also use torture as a legal method and blaming the United States that they have Guantanamo. And it gives a lot of incentives to tarnish uh, the reputation of the of the USA and gives reasons for other countries. And lastly, what we said is that Al Qaeda then gets motivated to strike even more. Ladies and gentlemen, what is terrorism? A terrorism is the last resort of these people that they think they can fight the United States because they've been oppressed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last straw for for Al Qaeda, and this gives them incentives. Um, but they said that uh, the USA, by doing this, is backing off. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the USA should back off on illegal methods to fight this war uh, on values that has been described uh, uh, as uh, by Bush. Uh, now, going on to their, uh, going on to our second argument, uh, they've completely ignored the fact that we said that the vast majority, 89 people out of uh, 180 people, are innocent that we do not have data. Only 50 people in that uh, facility are deemed dangerous to society, and who's left, they don't have enough information uh, on them. And they've completely ignored that and moved to their substantive material, which, first of all, they said uh, it harms uh, national security. So ladies and gentlemen, as we said, it is a bigger incentive for them to fight back if we have this facility. Um, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, then the second argument, they've said that there's the released information. So ladies and gentlemen, that's how we combat it, by using close courts. They've also said that Osama bin Laden was able to run off because of that. And what we see, that Osama bin Laden was actually caught without using torture, as the officials have said. So ladies and gentlemen, torture is not even an effective way that should be used in Guantanamo Bay. Um, uh, and then uh, they moved on to due process and that there's the Geneva Convention. So ladies and gentlemen, let's see how Bush implemented Guantanamo in the first place. He dubbed them as enemy combatants and he dubbed torture as enhanced to interrogation techniques to escape the consequences of the Geneva Convention, ladies and gentlemen. What they're saying is that people who are different can have different process, uh, can have different qualifications for due process. And ladies and gentlemen, if we are trying to determine whether somebody is innocent or guilty, the requirements for that person, no matter where he comes from, should be the same. And ladies and gentlemen, most of these people, as we pointed out, uh, we don't even have evidence against them. We're just keeping them for security reasons. And and whoever's left uh, are already deemed innocent but have not been let out. Ladies and gentlemen, there were innocent, 12 innocent Chinese uh, rebels that have been released uh, after uh, they have been deemed innocent. They were released to a detention camp in Albania where they were kept for four more, one, four more months. So ladies and gentlemen, we see this cannot be going on any further. further. And then on their last argument, they said, where are we going to send them? Ladies and gentlemen, what we have, we send them to the European Union, we don't send them to dangerous countries, and that's already going on, but not fast enough. Ladies and gentlemen, we beg you to propose an amendment. Clarify your policy once you say you will send them to the European Union. Uh, it's something that is already done, but not efficiently enough and not fast enough because these people. 
people are suffering. People have been sent to Denmark where they've been giving job positions and they've been acclimatized to the culture and they are living peaceful lives uh, and carrying on in the European Union. Obama has said that people would be sent back to their home countries if they're not okay. the, uh, Do you think information is necessary in combating terrorism? Yes, it is. So how will you, uh, so you will wish to interrogate these people to gain information? Will you interrogate these people to gain information? Interrogate using legal methods. Okay. So if the person resists interrogation, what will you do? Um, what do you mean resist interrogation? If he does not release the information through normal interrogation, will you use enhanced interrogation techniques? No, no, not in this case, as people, mostly in this case, are innocent and there are no evidence against a third of the people and only a few of them are actually uh, capable of producing this information. Okay, what about the people that are capable of producing this information? Would you that torture them? Yes. Uh, yes. No, ladies and gentlemen, this is a war on values, ladies and gentlemen, and we don't believe that this is the moral high ground that the United States has, uh, has to take. If taking that moral high ground causes danger to the lives of innocent people, is that moral high ground benefiting society? Um, well, we see in most cases. You can give your example of the uh, LA stop bomb. We can give you about uh, the example about Osama that has been stopped without torture. There are other methods that have to be exhausted, and you cannot use this, uh, especially without having due process. You said that Guantanamo Bay has led to more terrorist activities. Yes. But how is that possible when not a single terrorist attack has been taken place in the United States of America after the establishment of Guantanamo? Oh, uh, what is important is attempts, and what we've said in the first speech that even if, especially if Obama, Americans say okay, so that it has see, been a so you've already realized that less attacks have been taking place after the establishment of Guantanamo, and these attacks have also been stopped with the establishment of torture, for which you've gained information. Thus, our policy is beneficial. Uh, no, we would not agree. We would agree that other methods, for example, killing the top uh, officials in Al-Qaeda without using this... Uh, aren't you suppressing the legal methods in that case as well? Like what? You're not taking them to a civilian court first and you're just killing these individuals. No, I'm, taking, I'm, to the no, 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 I'm talking about how you get the information, not on how you act. Uh, no, you said you kill these people once you find out. Thus, you're talking about how you act but not the information. Thus, you're principally conceding that you're able to suppress these ideas of justice for the benefit of society. Thus, your principle is already taken by What we're talking about in Guantanamo is that there is no due process but principally allowing say, innocent people to But principally, you say that these rights can be taken away. Thus, the idea of these rights being absolute does not stand.
the negative beliefs that the uh, affirmative has conceded on its principles. Their principle was, uh, the principle brought forward by the negative was that extraordinary circumstances warrant extraordinary measures. What is their policy that they have come up and said in second affirmative? They said that in some instances we will allow your uh, government to carry out closed trials because we realize that certain people are more different from others. That is exactly what we are saying, that those people are different. They present a situation which is different from the normal situation, thus an extraordinary situation. And so you need an extraordinary measure, which in this case is Guantanamo Bay. On the second level, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that there is an inconsistency within their case because on one hand they are saying they are the, that they are the champion of human rights, that you cannot take away champion, that they, you cannot take away human rights, but on the other hand, they are saying that those people who will, they will try in civilian courts, they do not possess those same rights as normal people. We feel that they are inconsistent on that part as well. And the second inconsistency that is present within their case is that on one hand, they are saying that information is important, which is why we will use normal interrogation methods. Do these normal interrogation methods work? We are not talking about normal criminals. We are not talking about shoplifters or robbers, ladies and gentlemen. We are talking about terrorists. People who are willing to blow themselves up for their cause. People who are ideologically driven to carry out attacks to kill, kill thousands of people. People, ladies and gentlemen, who are trained for these situations, who do not divulge information so easily. Do these normal interrogation methods work on them? We don't think that they do, which is why you need this torture that is being carried out in Guantanamo Bay. And on a second level, ladies and gentlemen, they're saying in the cross-examination, they said that they would kill the top official. How is that, firstly, how does that, how is that consistent with your argument of human rights? On a second level, how is that consistent with your argument of due process? And on a third level, ladies and gentlemen, we feel that once again, you're conceding to the fact that extraordinary circumstances warrant extraordinary measures, which is why you have Guantanamo Bay in the first place. So till now, Team Affirmative has conceded to the principles of Team Negative. The only points of contention that are present within this debate are on the practicality and the points that have been brought up by Team Affirmative, which are, one, that there are innocents present in Guantanamo Bay. The first thing that we'd like to say is that this is not necessarily true. Who are the people that are present in Guantanamo Bay? People who have been caught fighting against the United States of America, people who you have, can, uh, who after you have conducted surveillance or after you have conducted checks, you have found them to be conspiring against the United States of America, or third ladies and gentlemen, people who you feel are sympathetic to the cause of terrorists as a whole. So clearly there is a higher probability of these people not being innocent. On a second level ladies and gentlemen, we feel that there is sufficient due process present within the uh, uh, one. Uh, Guantanamo Bay, which is my first, speak, which was my first speaker's analysis of how innocent people have been let go as well. So if they're innocent, they will be let go. On a third level, ladies and gentlemen, we feel that because these innocent, uh, we feel that the concept of utilitarian calculus applies in this case as well. If in order to save the lives of one billion people, we need to take away the civil liberties of twenty then we will do so because we feel that in such, an, uh, in such a case the state should work towards the benefit of the majority which is for by having Guantanamo Bay where you, where you can carry out these enhanced interrogation techniques to obtain this information which is so vital to the war on terror which will provide you, uh, tell you about the, uh, tell you for instance about the plans of these terrorists, to tell you about the uh, uh, criminals, other terrorists which you can use to save the lives of people. The second argument was that about, about they said that we never tackled the example of how 65% of the audience do not agree with this policy. On one hand, they're saying that 65% of the audience do not agree with this policy, but on another hand, they're saying so essentially they're not okay. The 65. Uh, we feel that firstly, this is a logical fallacy. Just because 65% of the people do not want something doesn't mean that it is the correct thing. On a second level, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we feel that just because uh, uh, that's uh, uh, even if the Europeans do not want something, you work toward, towards the benefit of the people. Your state does keep all options in mind, and we feel that this will be beneficial for uh, the people in this case. They talk about the sentiments of the Muslim people. 
then by that logic don't have drone strikes because that creates people uh, that uh, leads to sentiments amongst the Muslim people against the United States of America. By that logic, don't have the war in terror because you have to, you, uh, you create sentiments against the United States of America. By that logic, don't do anything. We don't stand for that, ladies and gentlemen. We want to do something, which is why we're doing it.
Gentlemen, no one in this debate denies that Guantanamo Bay prisons should be treated in a special way. But what we deny is that a special way should be uh, should be not in the way of the uh, should be in the special way of court system which are closed. So ladies and gentlemen, what I'm gonna talk about in my speech, I'm gonna examine this debate in two main clash areas. Is it morally justified and is it gonna be effective? So going on with the first point, is it is it morally justified? So what we first of all told you in the, in the first speech was we talk about inconsistency of values and how USA actually right now puts a hypocritical stand on the Guantanamo Bay. And what we heard from the opposition on this point was about that it's actually going to work on war and we're actually going to take a step back from terrorism. But what we see from this point of hypocrisy, we're going to see that we actually send a message to the society and the whole world that we actually allow torture and allow this, uh, this about about this uh, behavior in the society. And what we get, we get a stand that other countries like Malaysia or Syria actually get the get the uh, get the uh, get the right and the policy to do the same thing. And we say it is absolutely not right from the from the USA side to have a hypocritical stand on its on its side. Also, it actually serves as a, as a rally point for terrorists in the first place. And what we heard from the opposition was, it's actually, it was actually the point um, that it, it does not work, and it, and it doesn't work in that way because there are less terrorist attacks after that. What we see in my second speaker, I actually told you that there were attempts, but it, what the, the, it's, simply, it's simply this, it simply does stand that uh, there were attempts, and it's not actually to tell you that there were no in, in the first place. Uh, what we see and already we're closing down Guantanamo. And we see that already we want this to do. So it doesn't mean that all of uh, USA policy actually that we're doing a good thing, but it's actually saying so we stick the past and we should make it okay. And what we see uh, uh, the President Obama itself it, it himself told that no more security can be reached from Guantanamo. And we said it's an issue we have to solve. And what we see again, so we, we have a huge gray area in Guantanamo, and we said that people were not judged in the first place. And what we get, we get that well, we said the process, uh, the due process, what they told us, is about after, uh, after, and it's okay because there are innocent. Ladies and gentlemen, due process has to be first before you actually detain this in the Guantanamo in the first place. And only then you can actually uh, put some put, uh, put some actually uh, claim on them. But let's, let's see, what we actually torture innocent people and only then uh, release them. We see this unjust. From the from the USC side in the first place, and it should not be done. What we get also, we say that there are two kind of people in this in this uh, in the one time: innocent people and guilty people that are that are both in the same process because there are no due process before. And we say there's a huge issue with Guantanamo. Coming on, the second issue is effective. First of all, we told about special courts and, and how it is going to be more effective. 
because of their protection and, and the society. And we're, and that's, we're not saying that we're not taking their right, but actually we're adjusting to the situation. And as we told you, a special treatment should be uh, implemented for the situation in the first place. Also, what they told us about, we will not be able to use torture and torture as an important method to gain information. First of all, it's, there's a lot of fallacy in, within that. Because we're saying we, torture is no longer used in one time, it was used, but it's no longer actually now, now we, we don't see no, we see no, uh, we see no uh, requirements right now. But also, what they told us about extremists, that extremists won't tell information in the first place. But what's the, is that, I think, a logical fallacy within their case, based on how extremists are going to actually tell you in, Information if they if they sell them uh, if they if they sell them to us that they are not afraid to die in the first place. What we see is like inconsistency of their case, and what we see we want to use legal methods to gain information in the first place, and not to be hypocritical again with our values, with our most important uh, aspect that we see right now. And what another issue that was brought out, but where will they go, ladies and gentlemen? We explicitly told you that there are other options than, than sending them back to the home countries. We told about the European Union that actually right now has these uh, has these prisoners in the first place. But we told about Denmark, where, where people are actually sent to adjust the situation, and, and then we also said there's no issue in that. Also, we see that they began our argument about that European uh, uh, USA would not actually agree with the policy. What we said is a fiat, and we would not agree because we're debating in the first place with the legislation would, uh, would not be passed, but would it? Would, would it uh, should it pass or not? So we see that that's a wrong assumption. Also, what they told us that we will kill top leaders. Please, we never told you that information. What we told you is what, what we, uh, we, 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 we won't actually, uh, we, it's another debate we are, we won't, uh, we're not having today, but we're saying that information in the first place should be detained in legal methods and not others. Was there, was, was our, 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 our example was about, not about, it was only about distraction information, not about what we did after. It was a huge issue. So, ladies and gentlemen, on the basis of justice and morality, we beg to propose the motion.
in our trial. What does that show you, ladies and gentlemen? President Obama realizes, unlike Dean Lithuania, that something needs to be done, that extraordinary circumstances warrant extraordinary measures. And they actually agree with us here because they called for closed trials, something which is different, that you do not apply for normal civilians, which I'll be talking about more in my three issues, ladies and gentlemen. So Team Lithuania had to come up here and prove that upholding the civil liberties of one is absolutely crucial, even if it means that there is a potential that thousands of lives could be destroyed. And they had to show us that their policy could be effective. Now, we would like to make a few things clear on Team Pakistan. We are not for torture. We do not like harming people. We are a rational side, a pragmatic side, that realizes that sometimes you have to take a more forward-leaning approach in order to combat this war on terrorism, this war on terrorism, ladies and gentlemen. You have to do things that you would not do in normal circumstances. Now, what do we believe are the three major issues that this debate has boiled down to? Number one, can the government suspend the civil liberties of one to save the lives of thousands? We believe that they can. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, which world presents a greater catalyst for terrorist activities? We believe it is Team Lithuania's world. And lastly, is Team Lithuania's policy effective? We strongly beg to differ. Now, the first point, two things, ladies and gentlemen, or should I say gentlemen, incapacitation and torture. These are two things that take place in Guantanamo Bay. Number one, you're keeping them away from the battlefield, something that was not contested by Team Lithuania. And this is so important when terrorist networks work on the very principle of communication with other individuals and gentlemen, transferring information. Incapac incapacitation, which takes place at Guantanamo Bay, is incredibly crucial. Secondly, state sanctioned torture, its harms interrogation techniques. This is something that they do not seem to understand. Terrorists are not like normal criminals who may commit acts of passion. They are hardened individuals. They are ideologically driven. They do not break. If normal interrogation could work, why did, st why did the United States government even start state sanctioned torture in the first place? If normal interrogation could work, because it is a last resort, because all other options have been exhausted, ladies and gentlemen. Now, according to the Washington Post report in 2005, out of 200 terrorists released, at least 12 have returned to terrorism. And the acts that these 12 could, 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 commit, could, could commit, considering that one was able to blow up the World Trade Center, ladies and gentlemen, these could be apocalyptic crimes. And this is something that Team Pakistan simply cannot stand for. No right is absolute. And we are not here to add, uh, argue absolute. We cannot absolute, we cannot argue extreme morals. In the case of conscription, ladies and gentlemen, you take away someone's freedom of choice. In case of curfews, you take away their right to movement. Certain civil liberties have to be suspended. And they agree with us because they think that it's okay to try them in closed trials where there is little to no accountability, ladies and gentlemen. How is there any accountability in closed trials where prosecutors can say anything? And um, if they think that military military tribunals aren't fair, then they should agree that closed, tri closed trials are also not fair, ladies and gentlemen. This is principally inconsistent on their part. Then they talked about innocence. Well, yes, there may be a few innocents, but every side has its pitfall. We can't say that our side is perfect, because it's not. But if you interrogate 100 people, and unfortunately you say 20 are innocent, the information gained from those 80 can save thousands of lives, and that is what is important. Now, which world presents a greater catalyst for terrorist activities? We, we told you after 9-11, there were no further terrorist activities. However, and, and, and then furthermore, we told you, which was not accepted by the Senate House, that when, um, when they closed Guantanamo Bay, what they would essentially be saying, what would it essentially be a propaganda victory for terrorists, ladies and gentlemen, because what you're doing is you're stepping back. You're telling them, well, we're not going to take such a forward-leaning approach anymore, even though the war on terror is still very much in the present, and it's necessary to do something that is going to combat this. Is Team Lithuania's policy effective? We believe it's not. We told you about super, supermax prisons, which refused to take these prisoners in. Then they gave us a very ambiguous idea about sending them to the European Union. Well, in negotiations did begin to take place in, with the European Union, but those have also stalled, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, all things have been exhausted. In closed trials, they would still release a lot of information that is going to affect the war on terror and be very detrimental. And this is something Pakistan cannot stand for. For those reasons, we so proudly negate this motion.
would not be finding out the result of this round. Let's say close round as far as I know. So that means at one point you want to know what you want the most. Sometimes. Thank you. Thank you.